Welcome back everyone, I am Dean with Mazabiza Gold and Silver, and today we are going to be looking at some quality Buffalo Nickels. Look at that luster, oh look at that luster roll. <laughs> anyway, they are all 1938s, we got all three major varieties, so if you are new to our channel, I hope you consider sticking around for the whole video, and maybe even liking and subscribing. For the rest of you who have already subscribed out there, well, thank you so much. You have no idea how much I appreciate your viewership. Here is our first buffalo that we're going to be looking at here. This is a 1938D. The Denver Mint was the only mint in 1938 to strike the buffalo nickel. Uh, this was also the final year of the buffalo. And for those of you who are not familiar with these nickels, these were... Um, designed by James Earl Fraser and these are really just beautiful they ran this whole series ran from 1913 to 1938 and this is a quality piece as you can see here the grade is mint state 67 and it is encased here in a NGC holder our second coin to look at is also a 1938d but this is a 1938d over d this is a over the mint mark here, uh, also known as a repunched mint mark. The, this variety is quite common. Uh, you can find these readily available in the marketplace. Higher grades may have a little bit more of a premium on it, um, but you can see here on the reverse, we have um, similar luster, similar uh, strike to our first coin. So I'm not gonna tell you what the grade is on this one yet, but I hope you can guess. But let's take a closer look at that uh, repunched mint mark or the over mint mark here. You can clearly see the D over D, but for the rest of you who have never seen these before, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna use the loop to get even closer. I'm sorry I'm so shaky here. Um, I think I'm gonna freeze this uh, in the edit so you guys can see the D over D. Um, this was uh, discovered relatively shortly after uh, the 38 was struck, so not too, too far after the release. Um, and again, it's a very common variety to find. Uh, again, this is a beautiful, beautiful coin. You can see the strong strike, strong luster, um, just a hint of toning, nothing too, too spectacular, but it's still a beautiful, beautiful coin. Most uh, 1938s are quite beautiful, and this is another Mint State 67. Uh, just truly, truly beautiful. Um, yeah, I just love these coins. Um, our final coin here is the, the third of the trio here in the repunched Mint Marks, or I should say the varieties. Um, so this is a 1938D over S. So this is a pretty cool variety, and it wasn't discovered, according to PCGS's website, um, until about 1961, and it was uh, by a gentleman by the name of Kerr, his last name that is, and Langworthy. These two collectors submitted their findings to Coin World Weekly, um, and uh, it was actually David Bowers who confirmed the auth authenticity of the over mint mark, which is pretty fantastic. So I'm just going to try to zoom in here, and I will probably freeze it again so you can see it. You can see the D over the S, that S just inside there. So uh, just a reminder, remember there were no nickels minted at the San Francisco Mint in 1938. So most likely the uh, S die was at the Denver Mint, and they decided, well, we'll go ahead and we'll put the D mint mark over that S, and we will use those dies to continue to mint these 1938s. So um, there are uh, many um, varieties of the D over S. There's some strong, there's some other ones that are a little bit weaker. You can see here too, talking about strike, um, well, let's talk about grade first. This is a mint state 66, and we're gonna talk why. I don't think it's necessarily the strike on this coin, but you can see at the center of the coin, it's not as uh, strong compared to the other two Buffalo nickels we looked at. But uh, you can see that the luster and the fields are comparable, but it is the rim of the coin here. You can see one large gash there, and then another uh, large gash here on the rim. And those are the two marks that I think really brought this grade down to the Mint State 66 instead of it being a Mint State 67. Again, you can see here on the buffalo shoulder that, uh, that weaker strike compared to um, the other two 1938s. Uh, but still, this is a beautiful quality coin. A little bit of, uh, I mean, a little hint of toning here in places. Look at the United States, you can see, see there also a little bit of weakness there. 
um, in especially at the tops of or the top of the United States. Uh, but again, a beautiful coin. All three of these are really nice. I love this little trio of a collection. Um, I recommend a, a lot of people to oops, um, to get all three of these coins because they are so beautiful. Um, 1938 nickels really did not see circulation uh, like the other years. And the reason why that is is because so many collectors knew that the Buffalo nickel um, the final year was going to be 1938, so many collectors gobbled these ups, or gobbled these up, I should say, um, in rolls and in bags, and so that's why you find so many high-grade uh, 1938 uh, Buffalo nickels today. Um, really, really one of my favorite nickels, probably my favorite nickel, if I am, am telling the truth. I love the luster. I love the the design. Um, these are just really beautiful. Um, I actually ended up selling off all of my Buffalo nickel collection so that I could, uh, start purchasing higher grade coins. And, and these were actually the first three high grade Buffalo nickels that I purchased, um, after doing that. And, and I've, and I have some other raw ones here. Um, you can just see how nice, um, these are. Of course, the one, the coin here on the left is a 1913. Um, and you can see that it is a little bit weaker struck than the, uh, than the other one here. Um, but, uh, but again, just beautiful quality, wonderful luster, um, just really so much fun. Um, if you don't know a lot about Buffalo nickels and you want to learn more, I absolutely would. Here's another example. This is a, a type one Buffalo, uh, nickel from, um, 1913. That's why the reverse is a little different. You'll see, see the slight difference here. Um, the, uh, type one obviously is the Buffalo standing on the mound, um, while the, um, uh, here's another type one, here's a D type one. Um, so you can see it's standing there on the mound. That's a 1913. That's the only year of that uh, type one. And then this is the type two, uh, Buffalo standing, um, uh, on that, uh, ledge, I guess you could say, um, <laughs> uh, both beautiful coins. I just, uh, I really love these, uh, nice strike on this one too. I really like the strike on this, on this, uh, D, um, the luster isn't as nice. I'd say that's more of an AU coin, uh, but still, these are these are beautiful, beautiful coins. Um, let me know in the comments if you collect buffalo nickels. I'm sure many of you do. Um, it's a favorite of many, many people, um, especially toned buffaloes. Um, I recently purchased a new toned uh, buffalo, so I'm hoping that'll come soon so I can um, let you all see it. But yeah, you can see these uh, see these nicks along the rim here. Another reminder, you know, you got to look at the whole coin, not just the fields, not just the devices. You got to really consider that rim as well. It uh, certainly knocked it that grade. But again, great trio uh, of coins. If you are brand new to Buffalo Nickels, these three coins is a great place to start. Um, doesn't have to be as high of a grade as these. Uh, you can get them in lower grades. But uh, I'm going to tell you, if you can get a nice Mint State 67 or Mint State 68 Buffalo Nickel um, to add to your collection. Just one. I'm not talking about having them all that way, but just one. Um, you won't regret it. And they are fairly reasonably priced. When you get into the MS68s, of course, the price goes way up. But um, but the MS67 uh, 1938 um, Plain D, just the regular old 1938D, um, is not um, over the moon at Mint State 67, just so you know. Uh, anyway, I'm glad that you all uh, joined me today. I hope you consider uh, coming back and checking out our channel again. And I hope you consider liking and subscribing to our channel. Go ahead and put in the comments whatever you would like. I always enjoy reading the comments and I will always respond. And until we meet again, I hope you all stay safe and continue to enjoy.